Did you know that your back does most of the work when you're lifting or carrying? It coordinates your motion and bears the weight. When everything's working correctly, your back does this easily, making its contribution out of sight and out of mind. The problems come when we ask our back to do too much or try to use it the wrong way. That's when we're reminded that our actions have consequences and bad lifts can do some damage. We've all experienced back pain at one time or another and it probably resulted from lifting something incorrectly. Maybe the load was too big or too heavy or we lifted from an awkward position. But the bottom line is, if we want to avoid back pain and injury, we need to make sure we use our back the right way. What are the right ways and wrong ways to lift and carry? To answer those questions, we need to begin by taking a closer look at the back, its structure, and how it works. When we refer to our back, anatomically, we're talking about our spine. This is what gives our body structure and support. It allows us to move about freely and to bend flexibly. The spine also supports and protects the nerve tissue of our spinal cord and the roots of the nerves that lead away from it. Although we often refer to our spine as the backbone, it actually consists of 33 smaller bones called vertebrae that are stacked on top of each other to create the spinal column. These vertebrae are held together by groups of ligaments, tendons, and muscles. The spine has three specialized sections. The cervical spine carries the weight of the head and allows it to move. The thoracic spine connects to the ribs and forms a part of the rear wall of the rib cage. The lumbar spine, the lowest portion, bears most of the body's weight and the weight of anything that we lift. This is also the area where most of our movement takes place. That's why lower back pain is so common. The lumbar spine is a very hard-working part of our body. Strained muscles and sprained ligaments are the most common causes of back pain. But with proper treatment, these will usually heal within a few weeks. This relatively short-lived condition is called acute back pain. However, if the pain persists or frequently reoccurs, it's called chronic back pain. This may indicate that something is wrong with the spine itself. The goal of safe lifting is to keep your back free from both these types of pain and injury. When your spine is at rest, it naturally makes a curve that's shaped like an S. This shape helps your back distribute and carry weight more evenly and better withstand physical stresses. Through the S-curve, your spine unites the strength of its cervical, thoracic, and lumbar sections into a stronger whole. To lift safely, we need to concentrate on maintaining that shape. How do we maintain the S-curve? Here's a simple rule of thumb for keeping the back in shape. Just stand up straight. When we are walking, standing, or sitting up straight, our spine is in its strongest position. When you're on the job, it's easy to feel that you have to lift and carry something right now. But hurrying a lift can be a really bad idea. To stay injury-free, you need to think things through before you lift. First, listen to your back. If it feels stiff or painful, don't pick anything up. A back that's hurting is a weaker back, which makes it more prone to trouble. Putting more stress on it will only make it worse. Also, it's easier to injure a back that has been injured before. Next, consider what you're wearing. Make sure nothing will get in the way or restrict the free motion of your arms and legs. Will your shoes provide the support, traction, and protection you'll need? Then, take a good look at the object you want to lift. You have to be realistic about your capabilities. Ask yourself the following questions. Is it too heavy or too large for me to lift by myself? Is it hard to hold? Is it unbalanced or unstable? 
Will I be able to see where I'm going after I lift it? If you have doubts about any of the answers, you probably shouldn't make the lift alone. The goal here is safety, and sometimes safe lifting means not lifting by yourself. For instance, you may be able to pick up an awkwardly shaped piece of equipment, but if it gets out of control while you're carrying it, you're liable to drop it or hurt your back trying to recover. It's the same with carrying multiple objects at once. If they get loose, you can end up doing a juggling act, and that kind of sudden unplanned motion is bad news for your spine. Speaking of awkward loads, how do you pick up a liquid? Sounds like a trick question, but it's not. We carry liquids all the time, but they can still pose special challenges. A half-full container can look harmless, but remember, when you lift it and move with it, the liquid will slosh around. You need to keep this in mind so the shifting balance doesn't take you by surprise. A large jug of water may have a handle, but it can weigh more than 40 pounds. Should you lift it? That handle might encourage you to try to carry the jug with one hand. However, that would be a seriously unbalanced load and a back problem just waiting to happen. But imagine trying to use both hands on that handle. That would be a pretty awkward lift as well. Of course you can pick up a jug with each hand, that's a balanced load, but now you're hefting more than 80 pounds. How will your back feel about that? Using a dolly or another type of cart would be a good approach in these situations. Thinking before you lift means that you take the time to recognize the lift's requirements, anticipate its difficulties, and plan accordingly. If the load's oversized or hard to handle, don't risk carrying it by yourself. Ask for help or use a hand truck or dolly to give you an assist. Whether you're by yourself or have help, how you pick up the load is the most critical factor in safe lifting. So remember this, if you set up to lift from an awkward position, you're setting yourself up for trouble. Do your lifting with a straight back. Do not lift when your body is bent over, turned, leaning to the side, or when it's hyperextended, reaching upward or forward. When you lift from an awkward position, you're flexing or twisting your spine, and you're asking it to support the weight of the load. A bad combination and a recipe for a backache if there ever was one. Take a load that's at waist level, such as on a counter. It's the simplest type of lift. First, position the object close to the edge. Grasp the object, keeping your arms close to your sides. Keep your back straight and step back. It can be tempting to simply reach forward and lift the object before you slide it closer to you, but don't do it. Even that small movement stresses your back and puts excessive weight on your spine. Always position an object as close to you as possible and then lift. It's much easier this way. Now let's look at a tougher kind of lifting, over your head. This classic awkward position is extremely stressful to your neck and lower back. So avoid reaching with your arms raised above your shoulders when you're lifting something up or taking it down. Instead of reaching up, use a sturdy ladder or mobile stairs to put yourself in a better position before making the lift. The most dangerous lift you can do is when you're handling an object that's below the waist. In fact, it's even possible to hurt your back just by bending over. You don't have to be lifting anything at all. When you bend at the waist, your spine becomes an unbalanced lever with the fulcrum at the lower two lumbar vertebrae, the main weight-bearing portion of your spine. This creates a 10 to 1 lifting ratio.
So if your body weighs 100 pounds, bending at the waist puts approximately 1,000 pounds of pressure on your lower back. If you try to pick up a 50-pound object from this position, you're now putting 1,500 pounds of pressure on the weight-bearing portion of your spine, 1,000 pounds from your own body, and 500 pounds from the object you're lifting, because its weight gets multiplied by 10 also. So what is the correct technique for making these types of lifts? Here's how it's done. Get close to the object you want to pick up and lower yourself by bending at the knees. Keep your shoulders level, centered and facing the same direction as your hips. Keep your back straight. Take a secure hold of the load, keeping your arms close to your body. Lift slowly and steadily with your legs. Let's look at it again. When lifting from below your waist, bend at the knees, keep your back straight, grip securely, and lift with your legs. Of course, picking something up safely is only the first part of the job. The next stage is carrying it to its destination. Here, your posture should be the same as when you lift. Keep your back straight. As you move, your shoulders should be centered and your arms should be at your sides. Keep your head up. Watch where you're going and be aware of where you're putting your feet. What if you have to change direction? What's the right way to turn a corner? When you're carrying something around a corner, don't turn your upper body while your feet are still moving ahead straight. That twists the lumbar portion of your spine and puts a lot of strain on your back. Instead, change direction smoothly with your feet, keeping your legs and torso aligned. To complete a lift, we eventually have to put the load down. Remember not to rush this final stage just because you're almost done. You can hurt yourself as badly putting an object down as you can picking it up. The setting down stage uses what we already know about safe lifting. But now we're doing it in reverse. Keep your back straight, hold the load close to your waist, and lower it with your legs. Following safe lifting practices does work, and it's easy. Moving an object to a new location safely also requires eliminating the guesswork from the process. Before you start a lift, you need to scope out your route, find out what to expect and where, and proceed with caution. Make sure your path is unobstructed, nothing to bump into or trip over. Look for wet and slippery surfaces and avoid them too. Don't compromise your grip on the load by having to open doors single-handedly. Prop them open ahead of time, or ask a coworker to run interference for you. Tripping or slipping on steps and stairs can ruin your whole day. Locate them before you begin and make sure they are free of objects and debris. Low light increases the risk of an accident too. Make sure the lights are on before you begin your trip. Where you put the load down is critical as well. Identify where you're going to land before you take off. Trying to improvise under pressure can lead to trouble. A patient returns to a hospital room after a diagnostic procedure. They need to be moved back into the bed from their wheelchair. How would you proceed? You could transfer them yourself using a transfer belt and the stand and pivot technique. Use a full body sling lift device to move them or ask them to stand up and get into bed on their own. Depending on the circumstances, any one of these options could be the right one. With patient handling, your safety depends on choosing the best way to accomplish the task at hand for each and every patient. To eliminate guesswork and prevent accidents and injuries, you can use a decision-making tool called an algorithm. These have been created to help determine the safest and most effective approach for each variation of a patient handling task. 
Algorithms can usually be found in a facility's safe patient handling and mobility program. You can also ask your supervisor about them. They often take the form of a flowchart that guides you through the decision-making process by asking you questions about the patient. For example, the algorithm for transferring a patient from a chair to a bed asks whether they can bear weight, are cooperative, and have upper extremity strength. For a partially weight-bearing patient who is cooperative, the algorithm recommends that you use a transfer belt and the stand and pivot technique to move them. For an uncooperative patient who cannot bear weight, a full body sling lift is recommended. When a patient has full weight-bearing ability, the algorithm says caregiver assistance is not required. Your answers to an algorithm's questions should be based on your own assessment of the patient, as well as information provided by their chart. An algorithm can also provide additional advice for some procedures. For example, the chair-to-bed transfer algorithm advises that patients with partial weight-bearing ability should always be transferred toward their strong side. Most algorithms also remind caregivers that they should never try to lift more than 35 pounds of a patient's weight by themselves. Trying to lift more weight can lead to a serious injury. For greater weights, an assistive device such as a lift and sling should be used. Even when you're using the recommended approach, lifting patients incorrectly can still hurt you, which is why you should always use good body mechanics and lifting techniques when you're performing patient handling tasks. Do not bend at the waist when you lift. This places a severe strain on your lower back. Bend at the knees instead. Just before you lift, take a deep breath and tighten your abdominal muscles. Then use the muscles of your legs to lift while keeping your back straight. Lowering a patient should be done gradually using your leg muscles as well. Safe lifting requires more than just muscle. You need to use your head to size up each lifting task. Figure out the best way to get it done and then carry it through to a successful and safe conclusion. Let's review. Listen to your back. Don't lift if you're hurting. Think before you lift. Estimate the load's weight. Evaluate its shape and size. Does the container require special handling? Know how you're getting from point A to point B and make sure the route doesn't include any surprises. Know your own limits. Ask for help or use a hand truck, dolly, or other equipment when necessary. Use correct technique. Keep your back straight. Bend at the knees. Lift with your legs. Turn corners with your feet, not your back. Put the load down like you would pick it up. Lifting and carrying doesn't have to be a pain in the neck. By using safe lifting techniques, you can work better, healthier, and pain-free.